Hey, good Wednesday morning. It's April 30th. Michael Clark with BAMWX.com. Just 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, up and coming pattern for May, what the research is saying, and the potential for, I think, a very quick transition to a hot and drier May forecast. In fact, worried about a rapid onset of a drought potentially here for May. Uh, if the video offers up any value today, you like it, you enjoyed it, share it with a friend, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let's get right into the analysis today. Uh, updated graphic this morning. Um, the potential for a rapid onset here of, of a drought situation to develop. Um, we've already been, t if you've been watching the videos the last several weeks, we've already, I've already talked a lot about this area here the last several weeks and this is a little bit of an expansion of that and the way that the models are trending uh increasing consistency amongst the data and uh, despite it being active there there's also uh, at or below uh, normal column soil moisture right now in these areas um, and we're going to toss in above normal temperatures and i'm, I'm getting concerned that we may start to be looking at the onset of some dry conditions to develop. We're going to talk more about that here in just a second. April forecast versus April verifications. Uh, forecast on the bottom, all right, and verifications across the top. Uh, really a great forecast with the exception of the Deep South. All right, that's where we missed it in terms of the excessive amounts of rain. And normally in a, in a, in a seasonal, sub-seasonal forecast, when you miss it, it's normally a, a big it's normally a big anomaly, you know, that causes the miss. It's a big thing that happened. But the general orientation of precipitation being above normal and the big signal for wetness here was hit very well. The temperature forecast was hit very well as well. Um, so a nice outlook by the team here for the April forecast versus what happened. It's been wet uh, in spots, but it's also been very dry in spots. This is a look at radar this morning, and you're just continuing to get pounded down there across um, – South Central, um, uh, the South Central Plains, Oklahoma, Texas, um, and then more rain continuing up here to Missouri and to Illinois. It's needed rainfall for sure. Um, another thing to look at here is in the past 24 hours, there has been some significant hail, especially down across north central portions of Texas. Clarity offers this tool in looking at hail swaths, um, more into where there's some, some uh, you know, possibly some crop in the ground, uh, some things that could be impacted. We had several occurrences of one inch plus hail across Illinois and Indiana yesterday as well. Um, even Western Ohio, one inch plus hail uh, was observed. And I believe a, a total multi-state uh, severe weather report of over 600 severe weather reports yesterday. So an active day for sure. We'll look at the rainfall forecast the next 24 hours. We're continuing to note um, significant rains across portions of Northeast Texas and Southern Oklahoma, change the background color here for an easier view. All of this, by the way, available in Clarity. Uh, you can go to BAMWX.com and learn more. This map updates every hour, and it goes out 24 hours for the, the forecasted rain. uses a blend of several dozens of high-resolution uh, computer models. Um, and then this is a look here at uh, uh, the rainfall going north. Again, you can see, you know, a half inch, maybe upwards to three-quarters of an inch. But, but not, not enough. We, we, we're going to need more rain than that. To the normal, it actually could be below. The seven-day rain forecast right now using a blend of weather models um, indicates over the next seven days, north-central Illinois could get in on some rain that will be beneficial. Um, it's not going to be enough to catch it up. And the forecast beyond that, there's no additional rain coming, which concerns me going forward. All right. The, this down here, though, I mean, this is really a problem additional rainfall totals here look at this northern texas of over five inches of rain been possible so uh, when you look at the observed rainfall over the last you know seven days this is really unbelievable these are these are seven day rainfall analysis here north texas eight inches south, southwestern oklahoma almost a foot of rain the last seven days on top of the forecast of three to five more inches um, and the rain right now by the way it's, it's raining right now um, just, just crazy, just remarkable. Seven day rain numbers. Uh, when you look at, you know, our area of concern, the, uh, the old, the old, the old AOC, the area of concern where there hasn't been a lot of it is here. And that's where I'm worried about that expanding. 
uh, going forward. Again, this is another tool available on the Clarity platform. We'll go over here to Synoptic Weather. It's our weather modeling platform where we've built an uh, amazing platform. Look at seven day rain totals here off the European. What the European does is it cuts off the upper level low and it really amplifies rainfall numbers in the Ohio Valley. The GFS is the opposite. It's a progressive look. And let's go to the latest run. And it's, it's lesser on rainfall totals as it doesn't cut off the upper level low and moves it out. So you're kind of at a split in terms of how that's going to go. So what we did is we picked the one in the middle. You know, it's like the old Rocky, Rocky uh, four, hit the one in the middle. Uh, right. So that's what we did. Uh, and we went with the Canadian model for seven day rain uh, numbers just to give you a visual of where we expect precipitation in the next five days. Because beyond that, the pattern starts to dry up. All right. Week one on the left and week two on the right. We use the American data for temperatures and we use the EPS, the European for precip. Um, week one could be at or above normal precip in here. Okay. Uh, again, beneficial because it's about to change. Week two, we see this take place and this could be more of a, of an actual uh, May pattern here, if you will. Uh, week one, we're, we're at to slightly below temps here in the east and the south. The warmth really starts to work in here across the grain belt week two. Still cooler risks to the south and east due to some fronts and some the placement of the ridge in the area of low pressure. The big takeaway here I want you to look at is this coupled with this. The dryness and the warmth showing up in the forecast models. That's the concern. We're looking at some pattern drivers globally, and we try to an analyze this a little bit more on a, on a more technical level for some of you, because we like to look further than just the models. You know, we try to teach and explain. Um, this is the atmospheric angular momentum, the AAM or the global winds. Uh, when the global winds slow down, they turn negative. And we're approaching May as one of the lower forecasted uh, global wind months uh, since 2000. In fact, the other four years that are close are the ones I have plotted here, oh, 2003, 2012, and 2018. Uh, they come out to be very warm, and the American EPS data is continuing to favor a, a negative AAM, uh, which we call circumglobal ridging. Ridges pop up across the globe, and we're going to pop one right up here in the north central U.S. possibly. Among other research items uh, in, in the analog packages, We've come to really three that are interesting for the month of May, 18, 12, and 7. And they're, they're, they're regardless, all very, very warm. The core of the warmth is really focused in the grain belt. And the core of the dryness in these analogs is focused in the central portion here of the country. Um, I do think it can be a lot wetter here into May and, and here. I'm worried about this. I'm not sure we're going to get much precip up into here. We may have to expand this to be drier overall. Analogs are warm. They're very warm and they're drier, right? And so um, that's some, some preliminary research to that. Now I'll show you the CFS monthly forecast. Now, this is the last forecast for the May outlook. But look at the consistency since the 25th of April. That's really what I want to uh, point this to, is we've had six straight forecasts now of really, really dry uh, predictions for the grain belt uh, for the month of May. And if anything, the last three forecasts ex expanding the dryness a little bit, but all keeping South Texas, uh, Southern Plains extraordinarily wet into the month of May. Um, we have that, we have the global data hinting at it, and our analogs. And so we get concerned with the shutoff in precipitation. Um, the temperature forecast, again, going to be warmer in the, in, the, in the grain belt, cooler to the deep south. Okay, a lot of consistency in that regard. Which brings us to the official May forecast. Uh, much above normal temperatures favored for majority of the grain belt. Below normal temperatures south and east. Um, cooling degree day forecast for the country is at a 140. And that 10-year that, uh, normal is a 120. So... Uh, much above normal temperature forecast for a majority of the country is the idea right now. And some intense heat, I think, is on the table here. And when you look at the May precip forecast, um, this is the takeaway right now. If anything, concerned that we would need to be drier in here, potentially, 
somewhere in here and also potentially have a little bit of another level of extreme dryness being possible right now, early indications. Um, the temperature onset, the lack of rain, and the lack of rain in the forecast, in my opinion, uh, paints a troubling picture here for precipitation and moisture right now. Okay, one uh, quick note on summer. This is the probability for precip to be at or above nor uh, uh, or below normal for summer. Um, and this is the idea right now. The June, July, August forecast, we are seeing um, indications hint at um, the precipitation remaining to be a struggle. Back over here at Clarity, um, again, we do have long range forecast charts. And the, the idea right now for summer, uh, the, the summer forecast, if you will, um, continues to look like this for precip. That's our precip outlook. And we are forecasting a much below trend uh, yield for both corn and soybeans. We're 51 uh, bushels on beans and 178 on corn. A lot of that's based on the precip forecast and the temperature forecast for summer. So um, if you all would like access to Clarity, getting these types of updates every day, again, you can always go to BAMWX.com. You scroll right down. There's the packages. Check them out. Um, we'd love to help you and work with you. Share this with a friend. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.